Hello accounting students, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be doing analysis and interpretation of financial statements and also the audit report. So guys, usually people who analyze financial statements are the users of financial statements. They're still called as people who are benefiting in some sort of a way from the, the company, right? Such as like our shareholders, employees, our SARS or potential shareholders, people are looking to invest in the company. So now the, the ratios are divided into five categories. Profitability, liquidity, solvency, return, risk and gearing. Profitability simply shows us how profitable is the company. You know, the way the company is making its profit and managing its, its profit or managing its expenses expenses you know because the lesser the less the expenses the more profit you don't make liquidity just tells us about the ability of the company to settle its short-term debts solvency long-term debts the ability of company to settle its long-term debts return it's based on shareholders the return that the shareholders are making in the company risk and caring it tells us about the level of financing of the company how the company is financed whether it's come it's financed mostly on loans or it's financed mostly by you know shareholders capital fine so for profitability ratios all these ratios they have formulas you, you must know to calculate them by heart for profitability ratios is easy guys Whatever, when they say gross profit on cost of sales, it simply means it's gross profit all over cost of sales times a hundred because the ratio is called percentage gross profit on cost of sales. Percentage operating profit on sales. Percentage operating expenses on sales. Guys. That's, that's what it means. So this means this is percentage gross profit on sales, which is GP, gross profit over sales times a hundred then you got your answer in the form of a percentage all right guys in the form of a percentage it's easy this one is important this one is important because it also gives you the markup usually you'll be asked to compare whether the markup was maintained was being maintained or not if they are not the same then you state whether there was stock theft or maybe they were charging too many discounts and so and so forth now guys the most important thing to know when commenting when asked to comment on ratios if you could master these four steps then you, you can answer any question on ratios the first step the first step when answering or commenting on ratios you must know what you're analyzing meaning you must know what category are you focusing on you must know whether you, you are being asked to check on the profitability liquidity solvency risk and risk or return right that's the first step the second step you name your indicator you name you say that the gross profit on sales there's a mark for that the percentage gross profit on sales is 50 percent you see you name the indicator and give a figure right and then you the third step you compare with priors so meaning you say the percentage gross profit on sales is 50 percent for 2020 and you compare by comparing you just you, you you do not just state that in 2019 it was 40 percent you must think that it increased or it decreased that's the third step after then you conclude you give a general conclusion so if it increased you say then the cover the company is managing its expenses more proper or it's making more sales or it's becoming more profitable you see you give a general comment so you must master those steps even for current ratios guys you do the same thing the current ratio for 2020 was this it increased or it decreased from this much one is to one to two is to one therefore the company is the company can settle its short term that's better than last year you see or it has a better it is more liquid you see guys if you master these four steps then you can be able to tackle any question that comes your way when it comes to analyzing and interpreting financial statements now the most important thing is how to get these formulas the current ratio it can be calculated from the formula current assets all over current liabilities it, 
the same as acid test ratio but for acid test you exclude trading stock from the current assets and exclude trading stock from current assets net current assets you just say current assets subtract current liabilities guys this is easy 10 over rate of stock 10 over rate of stock is tells us how many times we replace the stock in our shelves and can be calculated by saying cost of sales all over average trading stock now this one is opposite of average period of stock on hand average period of stock of on hand is average trading stock all over cost of sales and this one it can be in days because it tells us the number of days that you take to replace stock so they are opposites of each other the task collection period here you get average the task all over credit sales for credit task please note that if you're not giving credit sales you lose sales you assume that all sales are credit here it's average creditors all over sorry about that average creditors all over credit purchases if you are not given credit purchases you use cost of sales average by average anything when you say average it means it's we multiply half you add two things and then you divide by two right so meaning you'll add trading stock at the beginning plus trading stock at the end then divided by half you see guys so anything even for creditors and debtors solvency ratio it's easy you just take you take your long-term assets divided by your long-term liabilities yes guys so you take you take all of your assets divided by all of your li liabilities all of your assets divided by liabilities so it's just total assets total assets all over total liabilities the net assets is total assets subtract total liabilities for your return return on shareholders this is also it gives you whenever they say return whenever you see the word return just know that there's net there's profit involved so here it's percentage return on average shareholder equity so it will be net profit after tax right net profit after tax all over average shareholders equity and profit after that so meaning it's a percentage so if it is 17 percent it means shareholders get 17 percent from what they've invested they get 17 percent profit from what they invested earnings per share it's also a ratio which is net profit after tax earnings per share all over number of shares because it's per share number of shares issued at the end of the year same as dividends it will be dividends it will be dividends both interim and final all over number of shares the same applies to net asset value this one you can treat it as the average share price it's the real value of the share which is which can be calculated by saying share hold does equity all over number of shares issued right number of shares issued even here do this they give you the return so this one it gives you the share price this one it gives you the dividends per share guys right so meaning if directors choose to give more dividends 
than last year. It means the dividends per share will increase. They change the dividends pay out policy. You see, they are paying more dividends, guys. So let's go to the last category which is risk and caring risk and caring you have the debt to equity ratio it also tells you that it's debt which is non-current liabilities all over shareholders equity guys this ratio is highly important it's highly 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 important reason being that it tells us how the level of financing of the business it tells us where the finances the, the company is financed through loans or more through shareholders equity through our shareholders so this 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 ratio it must not exceed 0 0.5 is too high because if it exceeds that it means we are relying we, we are relying more on our loans than on our shareholders equity it means we're having more loans. I don't know if you understand me, guys. It means we're having more loans. What the basic idea is that if we're a company, we must not take. We must take. We must not take. Many uh, lots long lots lot lots amount of loans. We must not take. Too many loans. That's the idea behind this. We must not take not take too many loans because if it starts saying 0 0.6 is to 1 it means 60 percent of the shareholders equity 60 percent of shit is made up of loans you see so now it becomes dangerous when it's like that guys it must not happen it becomes risky the company becomes very highly geared and it, it is at high risk See, so you must always avoid that then return on total capital employed this is given by net profit before tax plus interest on loan so divided by average shareholders equity plus average loans Please note, I'm saying average. It means you'll be taking figures at the beginning and at the end, dividing by two, right? This one is just tells us how much return are we getting on the total capital we employ into the business? How much return are we getting from the loans and from the shareholders? You could, it just shows us whether the amount that we are employing. Into the, 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 how, the way in which we are financing the business whether it's giving us good profit or not guys so that's just it about the analysis and interpretation of financial statements if you master these four steps then you'll be good to go and know these formulas guys you can know these formulas they are just interrelated the way i did them you know they are just interrelated you can also be able to do them the last thing is the audit report the audit report you'll be asked on it you'll be given a statement where you'll have to identify whether the report is a is an un unqualified a qualified or a disclaimer report an unqualified report it's what every company aims for you looking to have no consent with your financial statement because as i said to you earlier the financial the, the financial statements they are compiled by directors so the shareholders trust the directors to make sure trust them with the financial statement and everything the company they trust them trust them that they won't do any fraud they won't commit any fraud or corruption or behave in any unethical manner right so if you're having an act an unqualified report it means everything was just smooth the directors were clean there was no sign of an unethical behavior or something like that but if once you get a qualified report it means there's some type of concern probably there was five hundred thousand which was sent out as director's fees but with no proof but besides that five hundred thousand everything else was correct so there's just a little bit concern somewhere if you get a disclaimer report the auditors because these auditors they are independent they are not from the company they are independent 
hence they are appointed they are independent by shareholders yeah they are appointed by shareholders they are independent from the company because you know that the opinion of of someone who's independent from the company can be trusted more than the opinion of someone who is from the company who's related to the company right so hence the shareholders they are they appoint people who are independent of the company so that they can give out their opinion on the reliability of the financial statements of the company so once they get a disclaimer report a disclaimer report it means the audit the Auditors could not express any opinion on the financial statement because the the there the, the was just lack of evidence supporting what they, they are seeing. So they just they just cannot offer an opinion on them. See, so that's a, a, the report that no company wants. So that's what you must know. We have an unqualified, qualified, and a disclaimer report. Unqualified is good, disclaimer bad, qualified one concern. Thank you guys. I hope this video will be helpful to you.